Hey guys, welcome back to another video today. I am back with Omar Yusuf. We are going to be doing yet another collab together. I'm sure you can already tell by the title of this video what the topic is going to be. But before we get into that, I've said it a million times on my channel now, I am getting over an infection, a chest infection, bronchitis. With that said, my voice is clearly strained. I'm going to be asking some questions for the most part, but I really am going to let Omar take this video in his hands because talking is very not fun for me. I don't. I got you. Thank you know. You. Well, this is a public service announcement. I'm glad you have me on. Thank you for having me on. I hope you feel better. Thanks. Since day one, I've, I've been here. You've actually been under the water. But you're doing great, and I think this is an important topic. I started antibiotics today. I'm going to be a new person. So today we're going to be debunking the hourglass figure. Yeah. And if it's actually possible for all females to attain it, and how realistic it is, all of that. So, First, I'm gonna ask. <laughs> Go on. I'm like sweating. <laughs> so first I'm gonna ask you, what made you think to do this video? Why did you think it would be a, a good video to talk I about? I think it's prevalent in our society. Today, I think beauty standards do change over time. You only have to look at classical paintings to see the idealized male and female of physique change. And it puts a lot of pressure in today's society on women to look a certain way. You take a look at, I believe the model was called Twiggy in the 1960s and she was quite thin. And she was the person that the media was putting forth as the idealized feminine physique. And it changes over time. We've seen, you know, Sports Illustrated, magazine covers. There kind of has been this, let's call it thinner look that has been in. And public perception changes over time. And unfortunately, we're influenced by this. And ultimately, as individuals, as consumers, we have to take ownership of ourselves, of our body, to try and figure out what we want to look like. And so the hourglass figure, I think overall, is a move in the right direction. I think the fitness industry over the last several years has embraced, you know, a thicker physique, so the slim, thick mm -hmm. movement, where it's rebelling against the needlessly restrictive image that is on the media, where essentially to attain that physique, unless you're a genetic outlier, you have to starve, you'd be in a caloric deficit for most of the time, you'd be miserable. It's not a healthy, sustainable physique to have. So in response to that, the hourglass figure making a reappearance or slim, thick, I think over Overall has been positive. We just have to make sure that once again, everyone knows what's at play, determining if they really want to have this physique or not, and then what they could do realistically to try and attain this body. And what I mean when I say that is everyone's different. I think you should play to your strengths. I think you should find what you're comfortable with and move towards that. Maybe for you, you don't like the hourglass figure. Maybe you just see a lot of people with that physique, with that body, and you think to yourself, oh, that's nice, but maybe that's not you, and that's okay. You're part of the problem, Jack. Oh, uh, and what I mean when why? I say, like, oh, me? what did I do? What the heck? I think you have favorable genetics. I think you have a tiny waist. I think you have, yeah. I think you have, you're like, me? I th <laughs> you're the only person. I actually remember this when I first started coaching you. Not only person, but it was unusual because you wanted to build your upper body too. Like most women are like, I want a bigger butt. You're like, can I make my upper body bigger? I want I was like, biceps. I was like, oh, yeah, <laughs> But what I mean when I say that is you have a tiny waist, mm -hmm. right? You have wider hips in a way that accentuates that figure. So already in terms of trying to attain that hourglass figure, you're already well on your way. But some people have a more athletic figure, yeah. right? They might be blockier, and I think that has a negative connotation to it, but maybe, you know, they just, their torso's a little bit thicker. So I think we just have to be careful about putting forth only one image. And that's why I think body positivity overall is a very good idea, the yeah. concept, right? Of trying to embrace your true self. Being healthy too, making sure you're aware of uh, what you're eating in a sense that, you know, you're not causing any potential health concerns by your dietary habits over time, such as eating, you know, 60 Scooby-Doo snacks in one sitting. If one was to do that. very specific. No, that was a general. People eat 60 Scooby-Doo snacks all the time. That's just, it, it feels super specific. Does it? Because that's something that I do. You did? I still do. Oh, and that's why you're part of the problem because you have these favorable <laughs> genetics. No, and so I think when we say debunking the hourglass figure, it's not a problem with that figure. We just have to understand, first off, is it possible for every single person to attain that physique? That's what I was gonna ask next. Go. Sorry, oh, what's the question? <laughs> Go to your notes. Is this something that is attainable <laughs> for all women? Maybe not to the Did I say it right? Women. 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 Whip, whip, like cool whip. whip. Cool whip. And then say whip, and then women, whip women. Whip women. 
Women. Women. Women. Women. Say how you say it. Whip women. No, not women. <laughs> no, no, women. Women. Instead of wo. You, women. You say woman. Women. Woman. Women. 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 Am I saying it? What a man. Women. 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 It sounds great. Women. 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 Is this figure attainable for all women? <laughs> <laughs> Why do you sound like an AI? Trying to approximate what it sounds Is like to be a human? Is this figure attainable for all women? <laughs> exactly. The short answer uh, to that question is maybe not. And what I mean when I say that, it's the same idea. And I draw these uh, analogies because I train uh, more women than I did men in my training uh, career. <laughs> Who? Women. Women. You're gonna just keep saying, with women, <laughs> like every time, I don't know what. And so I think we might be setting up people for uh, false expectations. That's yeah. all. We all have different genetics. We all have different body types. And I think accentuating some of our best features makes the most amount of sense. I have a question. Yeah, shoot. So when it comes to someone like, obviously the people that most would frame in this hourglass figure would be Kim Kardashian, Kylie Jenner, Khloe Kardashian. They all suck. When you yeah. look at their bodies, especially recently, <laughs> they have gotten so much work done yeah. to their butts that mm -hmm. it clearly doesn't look real. Do you think that they are aware of that? Or do you think in their head it's a body dysmorphic thing where they're like, oh, I've achieved a you know, the curvy body? So I think uh, if I could tail off that conversation for a second, do I think that they're aware of the social implications of their actions, meaning that when they get some of these surgeries, what it'll do for young women will make them feel some type of way where I need now to get this physique? Yeah. That's definitely unattainable because it's via surgery. Yeah, I don't think they're aware of a lot right. of these implications. I think that's dangerous because I think as influencers, we have a moral obligation to try and do right by our viewers, by the consumers. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, that's an issue. One. Two, to uh, talk about it, do I think it is potentially them feeding into dysmorphia? Yeah, a potential. You know, I'm not an expert, so I don't want to uh, speak out of my I, qualifications. I look at them, and a yeah. lot of people look at them, and it's like, you know, there's the jokes about it looking like an ant's butt. And I wonder if they see what we're seeing, or if they're actually seeing somebody who naturally has a nice butt, if they're seeing yeah. a completely different thing in the mirror. Yeah. But <clears throat> Very valid. I think they're in an echo chamber of just a lot of yes people that surround them. Yeah. And I think from having that spotlight on them via social media and the media at large, it puts so much pressure that it distorts the truth. It mm -hmm. distorts their perception. So they probably, when they look in the mirror, they don't see what objectively is there. And that's honestly part of the issue when it trickles down then to the average individual, right. where now they take a look at their physique and that's the problem with body dysmorphia is that you don't see your physique for what it really is, right? You think, oh, I'm too big, or maybe I'm too skinny, or I'm too this, I'm too that. And the media as a whole plays a really big role. So I think when we talk about empowering women or women empowering each other or empowering themselves, it's about taking a hard look and it's basically trying to remove those social constraints that we create that are false fabrications and deciding what you want that's best for you. And that's why I think being physically active is something innate within ourselves. Humans want to do that. We need to move around. We feel Feel better after a workout, yeah. we feel better when we move. So it's something that should just be part of ourselves. Now, what our end destination, our end goal, our end physique is ultimately up to most people. I do think there are probably reasons, much like most guys want to gravitate towards a more muscular physique. I think the hourglass figure has become popularized for certain reasons, and I, right. I think it's there. I'm not saying it's a bad thing to try and attain. I think you need to know if you want to achieve it, what you need to do, and what your expectations are. So that would be my final question. <laughs> For someone who doesn't have, you know, the same genetics as myself or as anyone else with an even more extreme hourglass figure, how can someone look in the mirror and realize what would be a more realistic body goal for them. Is it still realistic for them to get that hourglass figure without getting work done? Mm -hmm. Or should they kind of accept like, hey, like this is the skin that I'm in, this is a great thing. What is a more realistic goal for me to set for myself that when I look in the mirror, I feel like I'm happy with that. Yeah. I'm happy working towards that. I think <laughs> you need to be comfortable at every stage you're in with mm -hmm. your own skin. I think you could feel more content in different shapes. So meaning that I might be this certain way, but I feel better when I move towards X. I think that's okay. As long as you have a baseline level of comfort with who you are yeah. and what you look like. I actually think it is possible from training so many people, I could say this, that whatever someone's goal is, if 
they're diligent, if they're focused, if they move with determination, they will inevitably look better down the road than when they started. Sometimes we have, and I remember for myself, the idea of Arnold Schwarzenegger when I just saw him like, yeah, man, I look like him. Like, <laughs> give me three years, like whatever, I'll look like him. So I, I think you need to have realistic expectations. I think <laughs> when it comes to building the hourglass figure, even if you have a more athletic figure, there's all these different distinctions where they talk about the pear shape, they talk about the apple shape, mm -hmm. they talk about the square, they talk about the rectangle. A lot of these and research has shown that where you start is not an accurate predictor of your total muscle building potential. And remember, even in something like an hourglass figure, accentuating certain areas is essentially what you want to do. So building the glutes up, building the glutes so your hips have the appearance of being wider, doing target targeted abdominal training where there is such a thing for most people they won't experience it but if you're just that person and I spoke about Britney Spears before oh, that yeah. had thousands of crunches if you train a muscle repeatedly hypertrophy will occur there so yeah. if you already have a blockier waist or a thicker weight do more direct core work again as long as it's not just actually fat and some people think like, I got a blocky waist I'm like oh actually your body fat level might be a little high and that's that, where DEXA scans come in right when I'm talking about the waist what I'm trying to say is if you do have that more straight rectangular physique core work is probably something that you want to do in a way that helps with other goals so playing side planks mm -hmm. uh, pal off press things like that not doing a thousand crunches and then lastly actually interesting enough training your upper body because remember it's an hourglass so at the top you mm -hmm. want to make it wider waist a little bit Build more narrow those lats baby <laughs> <laughs> it took so much out of me <laughs> you're actually drained you need a puffer after I'm gonna exhaust you. and your deltoid so <laughs> actually your side deltoid so again the concept wider up top makes the appearance of the waist being thinner and then the same idea with the hips down below being a little bit wider yes. so you can you can target just remember this whatever you train over time will grow and so training needs to be scientific you need to be methodical with your approach mm -hmm. especially if you want to have a certain look I think most people need to get on a very good beginner program they need to focus a little bit on periodization getting stronger over time some of the basic essential things and then after they attain a certain level of fitness what I'd call it so you're a certain amount of strength, you have a certain cardiovascular capacity, you've got your eating habits in order, then you certainly become more targeted. So it's up to the individual. I think everyone can definitely move towards their goals. I'm not saying if you have a very unrealistic expectation, for instance, Kim Kardashian, it kind of just looks weird, mm -hmm. her glute implants where then she has no thighs. Yeah. If that's your goal, that might not be realistic. So I think as long as your goals are more inwardly driven, I think they're more attainable because they're probably more realistic. Well. I think that's everything. Wow. Are you <clears> ready for your tea? he did most of the talking, I am exhausted <laughs> after that video. Listening to take some more. I need to take, I'm hot. I I, to, I, you actually have had a fever. I need time. to take some Advil. That's it, you guys. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, throw it a thumbs up. Make sure to go check out Omar's channel and subscribe to him. He puts a lot of fitness content up on the internet. And that's why I'm excited by some of the things that we will be doing and what we'll be launching because let me give you a hint. It starts with a B. <laughs> I'm very excited for that because we've been putting a lot of time and effort into it. It's something I've thought so about a good deal. So much time and effort. Yeah. As I've been saying. You've been on the bed. I've been here working on the, on this very table, program designing. But it's great. It, on, it I, I stand behind all the things we're moving towards 100%. Yeah. So I think it will help a lot of people. Any, any last words that you want to say? I'll do you proud. Guantanamo! Oh my god. <laughs>